Alrighty, thank you for tuning into this video. This video is going to be about how to use Stellarium with a telescope. So there are quite a few videos that um, I have seen on YouTube about uh, some of the problems that I noticed in some of the comments, which I hope to address in my video, um, is uh, some of the things you're going to need, which pretty much were covered. Uh, but stuff that I actually recommend uh, and have provided links for as well. Um, so first thing you're going to need is a telescope, obviously, that um, is compatible with Stellarium. Uh, I highly recommend the um, the telescopes that have the SynScan type controllers and have the ability to connect to a computer. Um, another thing you're going to need is possibly a RS-232 to USB, um, unless it's a newer telescope and they are no longer using um, the old uh, RS-232s to your computer. Um, but you can get an adapter like this. Uh, I've, put it, I've put it in the link in the description where you can get it from eBay um for about uh, just under 10 bucks in free shipping um and it's basically an adapter that converts rs-232 to a um, male usb port and basically what this does is is this allows you to uh, plug it into your laptop port and then you can control your uh control your controller basically is being controlled by stellarium um, and or your mount depending on where it is. Uh, if you have a controller that plugs into um, your uh, your your RS two thirty two, or if your mount itself, like on some of these newer telescopes, you actually run the RS two thirty two from the actual mount. Um, I've seen um, some telescopes like the Orion, uh, which I will show you real quick here. This here, if I can get it. Uh, this here is a Orion, um, this is an Orion uh, SynScan controller, and this basically is a controller that goes with the um, Orion Star Seeker 4 go-to mount, and as you can see there, one is for the uh, basically connecting your RS-232 uh, cable to your laptop, and then the other plugs into the controller itself and the other other port is for um, allowing you to connect your hand controller to the base of your telescope and then your controller uh, controls the base uh, which is motor driven obviously um, and then you have a cable like uh, if I can get it here without knocking the camera over now you have like a cable like this here which this here is the RS-232. Uh, this would plug into your RS-232 adapter to USB. We'd connect to it about like that there, and then they would uh, meet each other. If I can get this right. <laughs> Basically, it would meet each other like that. And then this end here goes into your controller, which is basically like an old phone jack line. Uh, for a lot of these phones, they use these landlines, use these little plugs. Um, but anyways, um, one thing I want to mention, and I'm already four minutes in, is before you can actually use Stellarium with your telescope, you should be aware that you'll need to do a two-star alignment uh, before you actually can use um, Stellarium with your with your telescope. Um and some people don't mention that you have to do a two-star alignment and you do have to do a two-star alignment because if you simply just take your telescope outside and you connect your RS-232 to USB to your laptop to your telescope and you go out there and you basically uh, press the control key and hit the number one key on your keyboard it's not going to do anything, and that's because while well, your telescope needs to be two-star aligned um, for a, a variety of reasons um, I can think of. And one is so you don't destroy your mount, because if you don't do a two-star alignment, 
and you end up or end up basically getting away with just going anywhere so you could potentially destroy your telescope by it you know assuming that, that let's say Venus was underneath where you are underneath the earth in rotation and you were wanting to take your telescope and look at Venus or Saturn or something like that and they were underneath you and you were to slew your telescope and heck it go straight south and down to the ground you could potentially cause some serious damage to your telescope or optical tube or either that or wrap up your telescope cables all around your telescope and stuff so there's a variety of reasons possibly why you have to do a two-star alignment before you can use stellarium uh not to mention that you need to know the stellarium needs to know where you are in, um in the uh the world and so without doing a two-star alignment um you know, it probably won't want to work that way either, just so it doesn't destroy your telescope. Um, but anyways, your your long story short, you need to do two star alignment um, before you can use Stellarium. Um, otherwise, when you press Control uh, and you press the one key, it's not going to do anything. Yeah, so it's very important to do your two star alignment first. Um, Another thing is, is I think I saw somebody mention something about don't you need to have your telescope or your hand controller in uh, direct PC mode. It's possible. Um, this here again is the Orion, the Orion SynScan controller that comes with the uh, Starseeker 4 go-to mount. And I will tell you that I don't have to set the uh, direct PC mode in the controller. Um, I just simply do my two star alignment and then use Stellarium and I don't have to use direct PC mode. For some for some of the newer SIN scan controllers or something different about the controller might make you have to be able to use direct PC mode. So take that in mind that if it doesn't work you may need to use that feature and it's under the utilities uh, part uh, of the controller. Um, but other than that, I'm going to take you over to my laptop and... Alright, so this here is a website to get Stellarium. If you want to get Stellarium. Uh, basically it's Stellarium.org. Uh, they've got different versions of uh, Stellarium that you can download online. And... Uh, if you've got 32 bit windows, you'll want to get 32 bit. The basically, the long story short is if your computer has, uh, less than, uh, well, has 4 gigs or less of memory, then it's obviously a 32 bit operating system. If your computer is running, um, 8 gigs or more of memory, then you'll want to download the 64 bit version if you're using Windows. Um, now I'm going to be doing this on a Windows computer, so I'm going to already have Stellarium downloaded. Anyways, this is where you can get Stellarium at, stellarium.org. And you can look at some of the stuff here if you want. Uh, I assume that you already have a basic idea of how Stellarium works already. If you don't, you might want to go over reading some of this stuff on the Stellarium website. Uh, to get a better understanding of how Stellarium works. Of course, I'm not a genius with it myself, and I'm telling you something that I even that I don't know, but I know how um, to hook up Stellarium with a laptop uh, and, a, and a telescope. So anyways, we're going to go over to Amazon now, and this here is basically a optional um, RS-232 adapter that you can get. Um, you don't have to get this one exactly, uh, but you'll probably want something like this. Obviously, this is the one that I was telling you in the in the video not to get. Don't get one of these with the screws unless your um, cable that screws on this has a female end. If they both have these two screws, then they're going to mediate each other and they're not going to sit tightly together. You probably want something like this one here which has the female end. You notice how it has holes instead right there where the screws are. It's on the side here. You'll want uh, an adapter that has these type of screws if your uh, your RS-232 cable that plugs into your telescope 
um, if it has the screws like this here, then you need, oh, it's the wrong one. If it has screws like this one has, then you don't want this one. Okay. I know it sounds confusing because even I'm confusing myself here. Um, but you obviously don't want one that has the same screws. You obviously want one that's a female and one's a male. This one here is a male um, plug, and this one here is a female plug. I know they both look the same in the middle, but the difference is is that the screws on the side where they connect to each other are the difference. So make sure you get the right one. Uh, worst case scenario, you'll end up with two. Uh, you can probably find these on eBay for a little bit more cheaper, probably about seven bucks to where I bought mine at off of eBay, but I just figured a lot of you guys may not have eBay and probably would recommend, probably would rather use Amazon. You can search on here for RS-232 to USB. In fact, I'll refresh the page here and show you some of the optional ones that they have um, that are RS-232. Uh, again, like I said, you don't want to get the ones, they see how this one has a male plug on it right here, to see the screw that's sticking out of it? You don't want one of those, but if you notice this one up here, the white one, this one has a female hole in it. And see how it has the, the end there? You'll want to make sure you get the right one for your adapter, is all I can tell you. Um, you'll want to stick with like a USB 2.0, I might add. Uh, 1 .1, 1 1.1 will work, it's just a slower bandwidth rate. 2.0 is a little bit faster, I'm not too sure if you're going to want to use a 3.0 because, yeah, driver issues. And 2.0 is plug and play with, with Windows. So you won't need a driver for that. Okay, so I've ranted on that. Um, basically, going to plug this in uh, to my uh, telescope now, and I'm going to show you um, basically Stellarium um, connected to your telescope. So real quick. Um, this may not work, so I might actually have to pause this uh, video. I'm doing this all from uh, just testing. I didn't test any of this before I did this live, this video. Um, so I'm going to connect my RS-232, which I showed you earlier in the video. I'm going to connect it to my laptop here. And uh, hopefully the, uh, the driver uh, will detect. Uh, when you do this for the first time, uh, it's obviously going to say driver installing and all that. Hopefully your computer won't give you any any problems installing the driver and all that. You might actually have to install the driver, which I won't be able to show you. If that's the case, you might run into a problem with that. Anyways, I'm connecting my uh, adapter here. As you can see, it says installing driver down there at the bottom right, installing device driver. It's on COM port uh, 9 there. So as you can notice down here, this is what the COM port it says. Hopefully you can see this right here, COM9. So if you go to the device manager, go to start, computer, right click and go to properties if you're following along with me. Uh, you go to device manager. You can see in here, um, it'll be under ports right here. It'll be under ports, COM, LPT. And uh, this here is my uh, my adapter. Now, you're probably going to have to install the driver, which unfortunately I can't help you with. When you plug this in, it may detect it, it may not. But if you get one of these uh, adapters that I was showing you on Amazon, it might come with a disk, and you might have to put that into a drive and install it on your computer. Depending on whatever operating system you're using, Windows or um, Windows Vesta. If you're running Windows 10, you might have a problem with that, doing that, just because of how Windows has changed uh, in Windows 10. But uh, once you have the driver installed, it should work. Um, that's one of the sad things about this. This is where a lot of you guys are probably going to have your problem. If you've never installed a driver before, and you're going to need to install the driver for your RS-232 to USB. There's, there's not much I can help you with on that. 
because mine's already installed. Um, so just play around with that. I apologize. A lot of you guys are going to be really mad now when I tell you that because this here is probably going to be the part for you. Um, I guess I can try to show you um, kind of if you put your disc, if it, if your if your RS two thirty two came with a disc, let's just let's pretend uh, you have it in your in your CD drive, and you've opened up the CD and you're looking at it right now. Um, there should be there might be folders in there called like Win Windows uh, sixty four bit or Windows thirty two bit or. There should be a folder in there, or there might be a, a file, a, a file in there called Windows, or or something like that, an EXE format set up like Windows or something like that, Windows Seven or Windows Eight or Windows Vista or something like that. When you go into that folder, there will probably be an EXE in there, like a setup in there. If you go through that and try to install all those, my advice to you is try all of them. You know, worst case scenario, try all of them. Um, obviously you don't want to have this plugged in, the RS-232 plugged in when you're installing the driver because it's not going to work. Um, make sure that when you're installing the driver, your RS-232 adapter is not connected to your laptop. If you have to, install all those drivers. Restart your computer a couple of times if you have to. Um, and then plug in your RS-232. Check the device manager and see if it's showing up. If it's not showing up and it has like a a yellow exclamation mark next to it. Um, try right clicking on it and going to um, update driver software. Um, you can try to do it. Search for the uh, search for it automatically. Driver uh, update driver software. This option, if you have this option, uh, if you have the browse my computer icon uh, option, you can try to browse your computer and basically give the path. Um, you can try, um, let me pick from a list of devices, and this might show up your, your name here. Um, there's, it's a lot of work, and that's probably where you're going to have a lot of problems. And I apologize, but fortunately, I don't have another laptop that I can show you how to do this on, and everybody's computers are different anyways. Okay, so I'm going to assume now that you already have your your RS-232 working, and it looks like mine here, and you have a COM port number. Mine, if you notice, is COM9. Okay, so we're going to go on Stellarium here. And this is basically what Stellarium looks like once you have it open. Um, if you go down a little bit and you look for the icon which has the telescope on it, and you click on it, you will have the option here to um, configure telescopes. Now, when you first do it, there will say there are no active devices. So if you go to configure telescopes, you want to go to add a new telescope. Okay, so um, basically we're going to use the first option, Stellarium Duck directly through serial port. Okay. Um, we're going to rename the telescope here because they'll say new telescope one. We're going to rename this. I'm going to call mine the name of my telescope which is, is a Celestron, which I can't type today. Celestron Power Seeker 80 EQ. Obviously, you can name yours, whatever your telescope is, or any name you want. Um, all these settings are going to be default. However, I will say uh, you can either you can either check this if you want. Basically, what this is going to do is is anytime you you start up Stellarium, um, it's going to automatically start up with uh, everything that's default. I wouldn't recommend this because if you change your COM port. You might run into problems with this not working. Uh, so we're going to scroll down here. Serial port. Serial port is basically the COM port, which if you notice on my own the device manager is COM, COM9. And it's already in the box here. But all you do is click the drop down box here on the side. Now that's the layer name. is different now. 
and you can pick the COM port that you have. If there's no COM port, you can just simply just select it and type in the port. You, know, you can add after COM, whatever number it's on. It's not listed for you. Um, the type of model it is, if you're if your um, your sin scan is for a specific telescope, you can click this drop down and you can um, automatically pick um, basically what it's for. Um, and they only have a select few, um, but normally, normally. Um, it's it's pretty much debatable which one you want to use. Um, hopefully, you can go with one that is close enough to your your telescope. I believe the Skywatcher Sin scans will actually work with a lot of the uh, Sin scan controllers. So. If your sin scan is using version 3 or newer, you're probably better off using the Skywatcher sin scan version 3 or later if it's available on the list. Um, I have a Orion Starseeker 4 and um, I, I, it's basically uh, this, this sin scan controller. So I'll just pick this one here. From here, what we're going to do is, is we're going to scroll down, and none of this is really important at all. Uh, the port, the TCP port, and the connection settings are not that big of a deal. Uh, if you simply click OK on this, you should now have um, your telescope um, set up. Now, when you click the Start button, this is only going to work whenever uh, your telescope, your RS-232 is connected to your telescope uh, controller. And when your telescope controller is connected to your uh, go-to base on your telescope. So if I was to click start now, it's going to stay connected, but it's obviously not going to work because um, it's not connected to um, the telescope. Um, but that is that is basically all you do um, to uh, set up your your tel your telescope to uh, Stellarium from your laptop, and from here you could control uh, Stellarium. Um, if you wanted to go to something visible in the sky, all you have to do is press and hold the CTRL key, and then tap the number one key on your keypad on your uh, keyboard, and it will slew to the object that you want. Uh, unfortunately, this will not work if you do not do a two-star alignment first. It's very important that you perform a two-star alignment every time uh, that you're going to use your telescope for the first time. So if it's, your fir if it's the first night out, you're going to want to do a two-star alignment, and then you can use Stellarium. Uh, if you lose the two-star alignment, uh, you're basically going to want to do a two-star alignment or a three-star alignment again, uh, or polar alignment, and make sure that your your telescope knows where you are. That way, when you use Stellarium, Stellarium won't take you to stuff that's not there. Um, I know this probably is a lot confusing <laughs> to a lot of you guys, and this video is really long, um, but... Uh, you'll need to do a two-star alignment, which some people, I think, forgot to mention uh, before you can use this. Also, I wanted to mention, too, that some cases you might have to actually use uh, direct PC mode for your controller, and other times you may not need to use direct PC mode. I know on your SynScan controller, if you go into Utilities, um, there is an option to do direct um PC mode um, with the controller that I have from the Orion Starseeker 4 go to mount I just simply um, do my two star alignment and once I've done my two star alignment um, I go ahead and use the uh, Stellarium software on my laptop 
the slew of objects in the sky that I want to look at. Um, I don't know if Stellarium will be able to track uh, satellites or not. Haven't tried. I know some people might ask. Uh, I don't know if some telescope mounts are capable of doing this and satellites move so fast. It's possible they could uh, track a satellite with Stellarium. I've seen that come up a few times. Um, I don't have a mount good enough right now that could that I could attempt it with, but I plan to get a new mount very soon for astrophotography that I can use with uh, trying that out. And I'll find out myself uh, if that'll work. Anyways, hopefully this video has helped you guys out, and I apologize for the whole part on not showing some of you gentlemen and ladies how to install the driver um, for your RS-232, but I'm sure if you play around with it, um, you'll probably figure it out and get it working, and you'll be up and running in no time at all, and you'll be using Stellarium uh, with your telescope. Um, so hopefully it's helped you guys out, and if you have any questions for me, you can feel free to leave them in the comments below. Links are in the, on the description of this video uh, if you want to get Stellarium or if you want to get the RS-232. Um, I'd, I'd recommend the female RS-232 plug um, with the hex screws over the male plug, uh, but it just depends on um, the type of cable that or type of adapter that you have for your um, your controller to uh, control from a laptop. If you don't need the RS-232, then you don't need to get it. Alright, thank you for watching, and have a great one.